Camp Studio is a user-friendly free screencast recording software that does not include a watermark of the software name on the recording screen in the final recording. So if you use this software, please consider making a donation to the open source organization. In this video, I'm going to try to briefly touch on five things you'll need to know to make a screencast video. The software download and installation process. Adjusting the video options. Adjusting the audio options. Adjusting the screen resolution. And converting the video file format to a format that can easily be uploaded to sites such as YouTube, TeacherTube, or Vimeo. The first thing you want to do is download the software. So you're going to go to camstudio.org and on that page you're going to see a description of the software, some video tips, and as you scroll down, links to actually download the free software. You want to download the version that's suitable for your computer. This option is for XP. This option is for Windows Vista. And this option is for Windows 7. When you click on the latest Cam Studio download version, it'll give you a choice of those specific options. After you've downloaded that and installed it, just using the regular installation prompts that come when you install any software on your computer. Then you want to come back and also download this piece of software, the Cam Studio Lossless Kodak. This software compresses the size of the video while maintaining a good quality. After you download it, you just want to follow the screen prompts for installation of the software and you should be good to go. As you scroll down this page you'll see that there's a lot of good information and some links to additional resources. So you probably want to bookmark this page so that you can come back to it should you have any questions. Okay, now let's look at some of the options in Cam Studio. From the Options tab, select Video Options. From the drop-down menu, you can select from several compressors, and I've selected the Cam Studio Lossless Kodak that I recommended that you download. For quality, I have 100 selected. And these are rates that have worked very well for me. But if you have the time and the patience, you may just want to experiment with different values. Set the keyframes every 20 frames. Set the capture frames every 50 milliseconds. And set the playback rate 20 frames per second. For optimal recording, I've heard from multiple sources that the capture frames value times the playback rate value should always amount to 1000. And I've always been told that the set key frames value and the playback rate value should always be equal. So you can experiment with changing these values, but we want this value times this value to always equal 1000, and this value and this value to always be equal. And I've selected lock capture and playback rates, and all you would need to do is hit OK after you've set the values that you want to use. Okay. The next thing on the options I want to look at is the audio options. In this case, I do want to record audio from a microphone 
as opposed to recording audio from speakers. So I have record audio from microphone selected. From the audio options, we want to look at the audio options for a microphone. In this case, all of these values were pretty much pre-selected based upon the type of microphone that I was using. So for the most part, you might want to select the interleave every 100 milliseconds or experiment with that. But what I have been advised to do is to select the use MCI recording option. By selecting the MCI recording option, you've selected to use the computer's recommended settings for audio recordings. And then just select OK to continue. Next, let's look at the options for region. The word region is referring to the recording region. If you select the region option, you use the selection tool to select the exact region you want to record. In this case, I've already selected region. And with the selection tool, I selected just this area of the computer screen. You also have the option to select a fixed region. For fixed region, you'll actually enter specific values for the width and the height. For example, you might enter a width of 1920 or 1920 and a height of 1080. Or you might enter a width of 1280 and a height of 720. Or you might select a width of 640 and a height of 360. All of those value combinations have a ratio of 16 to 9. For YouTube uploads, a width to height ratio of 16 to 9 is recommended. If the video does not have that ratio, it's not really an issue because YouTube will just add black area around the size of the video to create their preferred ratio. You can also just select to record the window, the computer window, or select to record the full screen. As far as the options and the, the region for recording, you may want to enable auto pan. By enabling auto pan, it just means that the recording region adjusts with the cursor movement. So what I've found is that if you select auto pan, you may want to use a relatively low auto pan speed, maybe about 15, to avoid the motion of the screen being just a little bit too jumpy. But that's something you'll want to uh, experiment with and you would just select OK. There are many different options, tools, and effects that you can experiment with in Cam Studio, but the ones we covered are just a few that you'll want to be aware of in order to record quality video. For my screencasts, I always select the lowest screen resolution in order to get a more detailed and close-up view of the recording region. You do that by selecting Adjust Screen Resolution from the Appearance and Personalization menu in the Control Panel. Click on Adjust Screen Resolution. 
and from the resolution drop down menu select the lowest resolution value in this case it's 1024 times 768 and then just select OK finally the last point I want to make is that the video created by Cam Studio has either a .avi video file extension or a .swf file extension, which is the file format for Flash videos. Generally, I'm creating AVI files so that I can easily convert them to MP4 files using Windows Movie Maker software. In Windows Movie Maker, just select Add Videos and Photos, select a .avi file, and select Open. At this point, you can edit the file as needed. You can trim it. You can split portions of the file out and delete areas. You can set a new start point or you can set a new end point. After editing the file, you go back to the home page and now you're ready to create your movie. Select Save Movie and choose a setting either a setting that's recommended for this project by the computer or if you're planning on uploading it to YouTube there are particular settings that you can choose just select YouTube you're now creating a .mp4 file and select save That briefly covers all the elements that are involved in creating a screencast. Downloading the Cam Studio software and the video compressor software. Adjusting the audio options and the video options. Adjusting the screen resolution in the control panel. And finally, converting the video file format to a format that can easily be uploaded to sites such as Facebook, YouTube, and Vimeo.